So uh, I can see what the French were thinking, even if it is a little rude. Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those, as we've seen before, is the way we say place names. You may recall at the beginning of Vlogmas I did a little rundown of some of those American place names that have been giving me trouble over the years and it turns out that I'd been mispronouncing. And it also turns out that those seven were not isolated cases. In fact, all across the United States you will find an absolute plethora, just because I love that word, of different American place names that I've been saying wrong my entire life, or at least for the last few years. And so without further ado, let us begin part two of this very series. Let me tell you a story. Not a particularly beautiful story by any stretch of the imagination, but it's a story nonetheless. A few years ago, some years after moving to the United States, I got a job in a call centre. Woo! Okay. Um, but one of the places that I had to call quite routinely because we had clients there was this city in Pennsylvania. And nobody at the call centre could quite agree how you were supposed to pronounce it. It was really weird. It was, it was something I'd never seen before. You don't often get sort of hyphenated names, both of which look like people's last names. But anyway, in this call center we arrived on the pronunciation of Wilkes Bar, Pennsylvania and you know for the last seven years or so I've just gone about my business believing that to be the correct pronunciation. Thanks call center because it turns out that's not true and that's because the locals very definitively pronounce it one of several ways. So you've got uh, Wilkes Barry apparently or Wilkes Burry or Wilkes Burr uh, but not Wilkes Bar. Tell me in the comments by the way if you're from this city what your pronunciation of it is because those are the ones I found on the internet, and we all can trust that, I'm sure. Um, but an interesting thing about this very city is it was in fact named after two members of the British Parliament, that is the 18th century British Parliament, uh, one of whom was Irish, and that was the person in question here, the second name on this city. And he was actually of a French background, was Isaac Barre. So that last vowel did in fact have a French accent on it. Uh, it doesn't now in the city name, but it could give rise to why uh, some locals, in fact most locals I think, actually add a vowel sound onto the end of the word. And while we're on the subject of places that were named after English things slash people slash places, that brings us on to our second entry. Ah yes, Newark, a town I know very well in England, not least of which because it has an unfortunate anagram, uh, but also because there are several places in the United States named Newark. Of course, the most famous one is possibly the one in New Jersey, and I think most people in New Jersey would pronounce it Newark, but Delawareans have bucked the trend, which is great because I like to use that phrase. And while I was aware of the existence of both of these towns slash cities, I didn't know for this whole time until I looked it up just recently that in Delaware they don't pronounce it like they do in New Jersey. They pronounce it Newark. So there's still an emphasis on that first syllable, but they also emphasize the word arc that's in there. So Raiders of the Lost Newark, which not, that's not a film, but it, it could be, should be at this point. Interestingly, Newark, Delaware is actually located in Newcastle County, although Newcastle in this case is not spelled like it is back in England. It's two separate words, but that's just some fun trivia for you. Anyway, on to entry number three, which is in New Jersey. I remember seeing this place name years ago and wrestling with myself, not literally, uh, just sort of metaphorically or psychologically, about how to pronounce it. Clearly it's one of those place names with three distinct vowel sections and I want to put the emphasis on all of them, not at the same time, that would be weird. Go through each of them and through trial and error uh, determine which one sounds the best. So I tried Hobo Ken but then so did Barbie until she discarded him. And then I settled I think on Hoboken. So I put the emphasis on the middle syllable until I looked it up and apparently uh, neither of my first attempts were correct. People there, and I think just people in the United States in general, nobody gave me the memo, um, pronounce it Hoboken. Hoboken, the, the, the emphasis being on the first syllable, apparently. This is named after a place in Belgium, um, a district of Antwerp of the same name. Uh, so I'd be very interested to know if the Belgians, or indeed the Dutch in this case, because it was actually Dutch settlers as part of New Netherland that uh, named this very town after the place in, in and around Antwerp. So I'd be very interested to know if there are any Dutch settlers watching this, if they could shed some light in the comments. Just realised this, that was, that was hundreds of years ago. 
In the last few years, I got on a bit of a national park kick here in the United States and, uh, you know, still to this day, want to try to visit as many of them as I can. I've even got one of those passports that they stamp. It's really good and really fun. But a lot of these national parks are they're quite difficult to pronounce. Uh, take, for example, Yosemite. Uh, before I looked that one up or somebody told me or corrected me, I don't remember which, I thought it was Yosemite. And uh, I didn't grow up with Yosemite Sam, um, although in hindsight, I did know him from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. He has a cameo. Uh, the point is there are quite a lot of national parks where it's hard to pronounce them. Sequoia National Park is another one. I'm not entirely convinced I got it right just there. Um, but the one on the list today is this one. Now, I should say I've never been. I suppose I was close to it when I was in Pocatello, Idaho. It's just sort of across the Idaho border and into Wyoming. But this particular national park, I, I think I've always just instinctively pronounced it Grand Teton National Park. I don't know why. There's not a double T there in the middle of the word um, to, to point me in that direction. It's just something that... Um, I instinctively did without asking and I think one of the things about these place names and all of the place names with which I've struggled is that I've usually only ever read them you know, I might have read them quite frequently, and I certainly have with this place and all of the sort of national parks that I just mentioned. I've just never heard it said out loud until very recently when I became aware it's actually pronounced, not just locally, but I think by most people that know this in the United States, it's actually pronounced Grand Teton. There's actually quite a uh, lewd way to remember this, and that is that the origin of this word, or the disputed origin of this word, is that it, it actually comes from French to mean teat. So the grand teat is what they believe the etymology of this very word is, although, like I said, some people do dispute that. I suppose that makes sense. I mean, grand teat in itself is a mountain. So uh, I can see what the French were thinking, even if it is a little rude. And I have to tell you, this is not the only French entry on this list, or should that be Frenchry? New word. Yes, the capital city of Iowa, a state that unfortunately I still haven't been to, despite declaring my intention to do so some years ago. I will get there though, I promise, and I'll probably visit this very city. But before I do, I really ought to tune up on the way I pronounce it. Now, you're probably thinking that I've been pronouncing it all this time as Des Moines. Uh, no, not the case, not the case. In fact, I learned years ago uh, that those S's were very much silent in this word just because of the French influence. Um, but it turns out that I've still not quite been getting it right. I've been walking around this whole time or just, you know, lying around it. I don't have to be walking while saying it. The point is, when I say it, I've been saying Des Moines uh, because that's sort of my corrupted attempt at French. But it turns out that the locals and sort of people from the surrounding areas actually pronounce it Des Moines. And I can almost see the French doing that too. Uh, Des Moines instead of Des Moines. I think it's probably me getting it wrong. But then again, I'm not a French expert or a French bird, which that can't be a word. Funnily enough, though, Des Moines in French actually means the monks. Um, and it was named after the nearby river. So it was the, that river was actually the river of monks. There's a site you don't see every day. If, if you're a monk, let me know in the comments below if you still paddle in that river. There's no way that that happens. Um, without further ado, let's move on to our penultimate entry. So this is a place, of course, that has a strong presence in American history. It was at the courthouse in this very town that General E. Lee surrendered. But it was last year, I think, during Vlogmas, no less, when I was taking a quiz on American history, and this question came up, and I couldn't pronounce the name for the life of me. I must have gone through about a thousand phonetic iterations of this word. So there was apomatox, opomatox, apomatox, 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 just many different, I mean, lots of different things until I arrived at the last one. I only arrived there because somebody corrected me a day later. So I suppose the correct pronunciation is Appomattox. It's a word not dissimilar in many ways to uh, Potomac in the way it trips me up. You expect the uh, emphasis to be on a different vowel sound and it just isn't. And I think also, of course, the word Potomac has its origins in Virginia, much like Appomattox, um, Native American history uh, to it. In fact, it comes from the Appomattox tribe who lived in the lower banks of the river. No word yet on whether they encountered any monks. And from the land of apparently rivers to the land of 10,000 lakes. So this one's quite embarrassing. I only worked out today that I've been saying this wrong my entire life, or at least for the last seven years since I became aware of its existence. It's a city, of course, in Minnesota and outside of Minneapolis and Paul. It is one of the sort of more well-known cities, I think, in Minnesota. And all this time, I've been pronouncing it more or less how you pronounce the airport in Washington, DC. It's like Dulles with a lisp. Dulleth, 
Minnesota, and I I couldn't even see another way to pronounce it. I really couldn't. And again, it's one of those words, it's one of those place names I've only ever seen written down on a map many times because I'm constantly looking at the top of Minnesota to see if it really is a chef's hat. Have you done the whole from head to feet Louisiana thing? Forget it, never mind. Look it up later. The truth is, though, this is not. I was shocked when I went to Wikipedia and I clicked the pronunciation play button. Duluth? Dulu What's Duluth? Well, again, it turns out it's actually a French origin. Origin. In fact, it's named very specifically for a French explorer who went by the name of Daniel Grisselon. That's the terrible pronunciation of his name, I'm sure. But he had a second part to his name, a title, which was Sieur de Lout. Again, butchered French. But it was that last part from which they get Luth. And it used to be two separate words, D-U and then L-U-T-H. In fact, there was a time when, again, a la French, it was uppercase D, uppercase L, but still all one word. You could at least tell uh, the way it was formed at that point. At this point, I'm not seeing, when I see the word, I don't see the sort of French origin behind it, so I'm not inclined to say Duluth. So I, 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 it's Duluth, Duluth. Welcome to Duluth Airport, it's the wrong place. So if you live in Duluth, let me know if that's how you say it, and also if you've ever heard people say it like I've been saying it, and if you have to correct them. Uh, you won't have to correct me anymore. I vow from this day forward to pronounce all of these names correctly, and if I don't, you, can, you have my permission to slap me. That's, I mean, just metaphorically or in the comments. Don't actually, we don't want physical violence. That's it for this episode. Again, if you live in any of these places, let me know in the comments below how you pronounce them and if I got them uh, halfway correct. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that my videos don't get lost in the pond or in the land of 10,000 lakes. And a big shout out, as always, to my patrons who make this channel possible. Without you, none of this would be. From the writing to the research to the lisp, if you would like to become a patron today, you can do so at patreon.com slash lostin the pond. Uh, anybody that becomes a patron, of course, will get access to my secret live stream. Our next one is going to be in January because we're just skipping for the holidays, so stay tuned for that. And anybody that pledges $5 or more a month will get access to my secret podcast as well. So uh, incentives there to do that. Once again, thank you for tuning in. I hope you continue to enjoy Vlogmas for the days that we have remaining. And until next time, have a good day. I'll see you soon. Bye. That was a long outro. Thank you for watching this episode of Lost in the Pond. Don't forget to hit my stupid little face to subscribe and please share this video with the world. Hit me up on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. And if you would like to support this channel, please do so at patreon.com slash lostinthepond.